Are you looking for some ways of taking your piano playing to the next level? Well, learning how to pedal like a pro can have a dramatic impact for actually very little effort. Stay tuned for some ideas. Are you sitting comfortably? Then let's begin. Hi, this is Tommy with Tommy's Piano Corner, the place for returning pianists or indeed anybody who loves piano to share tips and ideas of how to get the best from this great hobby. If it's your first trip here, then please do think about subscribing. Simply click the little icon in the bottom right hand corner of your screen now and it's all done for you. As a young learner, I remember being taught about what the right hand pedal or the loud pedal as we called it was for. And it was basically to be able to make legato when you couldn't do it with your fingers alone. However, this really is just the tip of the iceberg in terms of how you can use that pedal. And I suspect explaining it as simply as making legato is one of those lies to children that we often get where in fact to try and teach us the full depth of what the pedal's capable of would probably be far too complicated for us to take in all at once. So therefore we've primed with this lie. In my view, the sooner we manage to stop thinking about the right hand pedal as simply being an on off switch to get legato, the better. And I think the same is true for the left hand or the unicorder pedal. So stay tuned for some ideas in this right at the end of the video. Heinrich Neuhaus in his book, The Art of Piano Playing, actually describes the pedal as what gives a piano its soul. And he even goes on further to say that people who believe that any music should be played without pedal, even Bach, are effectively emasculating our beautiful instrument. Let's have a little think about how the pedal works then. As I'm sure you know, whenever we press a key, not only do we cause a hammer to hit the string of the piano, but it also causes the damper that normally sits across the strings to be lifted. And as long as we keep the key pressed down, the damper's lifted, the string sounds. If this didn't happen, we'd simply get a little thud when a hammer hit a string that still had a damper on it and therefore couldn't vibrate. However, when we use the pedal, what we're able to do is we're able to stop the hammers from going back down onto the strings again. And this is where we get that first effect of legato. However, it's very important to recognize that this isn't all that's going on when we press the pedal. Probably the most striking effect you get from the right hand pedal is what's called resonance. So expressed simply, whenever we play a note, the hammer hits the string, the string vibrates, and that's what makes the sound. So you've got physical sound waves that are moving through the piano, and of course these get amplified by the soundboard. However, when you press the pedal and it lifts all the dampers off all the strings, what actually happens is that these same sound waves cause the other strings in the piano to also vibrate in sympathy with the ones that have been struck by the hammer. Perhaps the easiest way to demonstrate this to start with is to take one of the notes at the top end of the piano. Now, as you can see, at the top end of the piano, there are no dampers on the strings. And when we hit a note, you still get very little sustain, even though the dampers aren't there. However, if we play this same note with the pedal depressed, then you'll hear that that note sustains for much, much longer. And that's not because the pedal has lifted anything off that string to make it vibrate for longer. Of course it hasn't. It's the fact that the sound waves are making the other strings within the piano vibrate in sympathy with the string that we originally hit that gives us this extra sustain. And that's resonance. 
Now let's try and explore its effects on strings with dampers. First, we can play a single note, hold it down, and then release the key. Then we can play a single note, hold it down, then depress the pedal, then release the key, and then release the pedal. And finally, we can press the pedal first, then play the note and lift our finger. In all three cases, the effect you get is very different. Now let's do the same with a chord. I'm sure you can hear that even without a very sophisticated set of recording equipment, there's a very audible difference to the sound. Now we experiment with this same thing by using different combinations of keys at different registers in the piano. So some high, some low, some middle. And as you'll soon see, the variety of effects that you can get is almost infinite. Now then let's take this one step further. Another thing that Neuhaus pointed out in his book is that most of us, when we dance, we're very capable of lots of fine, light footwork, yet suddenly when we sit at the piano, our foot is turned into a stump that's either up or down. And his point simply is that we should never think about the pedalers being either on or off. We should realize that there are degrees of pedaling. Depending on who you listen to, you might hear numbers quoted of anything between four and eight as being the different degrees of pedal that it's possible to obtain on a good piano. However, simply the best way to think about it is that as you start to lift the pedal up again, the dampers start to slowly move closer to the strings. And what this does is that because the dampers are felt, they just touch the tips of the strings at first, so remove only a little bit of the resonance, but the strings still vibrate a little bit. And the more you lift it, the closer and more firmly the, the dampers become on the strings until eventually they stop the vibration altogether. And that's when your foot's fully lifted. Try it out for yourself. Play a chord with your foot down on the pedal and then start to lift your foot as slowly as you can and listen carefully to the sound. And you'll hear it goes through a range of different sounds before it eventually comes off altogether. I found this effect to be particularly useful in some pieces. So for example, when I used to play Debussy's first arabesque, I always found that the polyrhythm section started to sound a little, I don't know, muddy and confused. No matter how much I changed the pedal, it was, I was never quite happy with it. Yet I did find that if I lifted it a little bit, so maybe to, I don't know, three quarters or a half the way up, what would happen is that you'd get enough of the resonance would be stopped, yet you'd still get the sustain and resonance there, and the clarity would be much, much better.
I found that you can also get some interesting effects with the Unicordra or the left pedal when you start releasing it or only pressing it down partially. So as you know, when we press the Unicorder pedal, the entire action of the piano moves ever so slightly over to the right, so that when the hammer hits the strings, it actually only hits two of the three strings, yet the third string still vibrates in sympathy with the other two. And this is what creates our beautiful soft tone. However, if we start to lift the unicorder pedal ever so slightly, the action will start to move gradually over to the left again. And in this way, as we play, the hammers start to touch just the side of the third string and progressively move across over to the third string. So you get a gradiated effect, if you like, as you start to lift the pedal. To illustrate this, let's have a look at one of the parts in Debussy's Claire de Lune where we have the unicorder pedal pressed and then Debussy tells us to lift it again later. Now listen to the same thing and the effect we get if we just start to lift the pedal ever so slightly progressively as we play through this. You'll find that the tone changes very, very subtly and you don't get such an abrupt difference between the more soft muted sound and the brightness of having the pedal fully lifted. I had an interesting online discussion about this with a concert pianist. His view was that whilst you might get some changes, he particularly wouldn't rely on it, especially if you need to use lots of different pianos in different places and you're not always very familiar with those pianos. However, given that I basically play mainly for myself and to record for my friends whilst I'm at home, always on my own piano, I find that it adds a certain je ne sais quoi when I play, so I'm quite happy to experiment with it. I don't know if you remember when you first learned to drive, I know I certainly did this. As you went from one car to another, it was really difficult to get used to the accelerator pedal or the gas pedal. And you'd either end up over revving the car so the engine would be screaming away, or you wouldn't rev it enough and you'd stall the car. However, as you've been driving for a few years, you get more used to it, and you can now adjust to different cars. Pretty much within seconds, you need to press the accelerator only once, and that's enough for you to know how much play there is in it and how much you pressure you need to use. And I think the same is true with the pedals on a piano. Every piano that you play in every different space will of course be slightly different and the effects of the pedal will be slightly different. But if we try experimenting with this as soon as we can and get used to using the pedal as more than just an on and off switch, I'm sure we'll find that we can very quickly adapt to different pianos. Certainly performing artists seem to have no problems doing this. So start exploring then all the different possibilities the pedal gives you beyond this on and off legato switch. If you're not already, then please do subscribe to Tommy's Piano Corner. Don't forget to hit the little bell icon so you're notified of new videos as and when they're released. I thank you very much for watching. And I'll see you soon.